guys, I'm seriously sweaty. If the lighting looks a little bit different in this video, it's because I'm after facing the lights away from my face because it's too damn hot. Hello my internet family and welcome back for another monthly favorites video. As usual, I'm going to start off with a little bit of an update and then get into all the different categories. I have some really, really good stuff to share this month. So in August, I turned 27 and although the month was a little bit up and down um, in terms of like my mental health, which I kind of haven't been sharing so much online and I I don't know, I would like to start opening up a bit more about that on like down days because I try and I guess I try and always put out positivity for you guys, but do let me know if you'd like me to do kind of more um in the moment kinds of updates. Maybe on Snapchat I might do that more often because I have been sometimes. So luckily my birthday actually fell on Summer in the City which is a big YouTube convention where I get to meet loads of you guys. Yeah, I had a three hour meet and greet with viewers and I even got proposed to at the end of it which was great. Will you marry Ellie? I will marry you Ellie. <laughs> I'm romantic as that. <laughs> Holy shit, it's happening. She's a taken woman. I'll be honest, I'm mainly mentioning Sitsi because my fashion favorites of the month were the two Ted Baker dresses that I wore at the event. I wore one on the Saturday and one on the Sunday. Ted Baker dresses cost an arm and a leg, um, but they're always really worth it. So if you ever need a dress for like a wedding or anything, I highly recommend Ted Baker. They're so flowy and the structure of them is beautiful. They last a long time in your wardrobe, you know, you can wear them over and over again. They made me feel great because I was going through some mental health stuff, like I said, and one way I like to make myself better is to just kind of try and feel good about myself. And um, these dresses really flattered my figure and stuff. And yeah, ooh, as well for my birthday, a really good friend of mine got me one of the best birthday presents I've ever been given and it was one of the Lush spa treatments. So you guys know I'm obsessed with Lush cosmetics, right? In the Oxford Street store, they have a spa on the bottom floor and the one that I got was called Synesthesia, I think. So it was like, a, I think it was 80 minutes or something, like this really long massage. They use beautifully scented oils and there's just really lovely music playing and um, they've got dry ice kind of in the room. It was such an experience. So I definitely recommend that too. Um, I really want to bring my mom and my little sister there. Like, I really want to do it before Christmas. I'm going to start off with beauty and makeup products. Um, have to give these to a mention because I just picked these up again recently and oh my god my little sister uses these and I used to use them all the time when I lived with my mum they're the L'Oreal Paris LV Nutri Gloss Shine Conditioners um but yeah like every time I visited my mum over the years I've used these and I don't know why I never get them I think it's because it's like say at home you always have Jaffa cake biscuits and then when you go to your friend's house she always has some kind of special cookies and then like they seem more alluring because you always have the other ones but like these really do a great job at giving you shine and um, they made my hair feel so soft they're actually for shine but it also says that they give a cashmere touch and that they give like a weightless kind of feel to your hair definitely do and I really like the smell of these as well. A skincare thing that I have to tell you guys about and I don't want to wait for my next like routine video to talk about this, it's the Vichy Mask Peel. This one, the pink one. So basically there's this one, a clay one, and then there's like a blue one, which is for moisture. These are face masks that you put on for 10 minutes and then wash off. So they're really good if you're busy like I am. Um, I like using these in the mornings. If I'm eating my breakfast, I'll just sit there with this. This is a clear one as well, which kind of sucks because I like when they're colored, but oh well, it does a good job. Um, so the main thing that this does is it kind of helps to peel off the top layer of skin. It has AHAs in it, and I believe this one has like volcanic rock as one of the ingredients. I don't know if it's gimmicky, I don't know. I just feel like it's brightened up my complexion and it's definitely made my skin more like luminous. I had a couple of pictures on Instagram with no makeup on and you guys were like, oh, your skin. Um, I put them on Twitter as well and like just everyone was complimenting my skin and that's just such a recent thing for me, getting like skin compliments this past year. I've worked really hard on like my skincare routine and all that so, um. That means a lot to me when you guys say stuff like that. It's just really sweet. Then I have two 
makeup favorites this kind of qualifies as a skincare favorite too and I don't think I'm going to go into detail about this because I will do a dedicated video on it really soon it's the La Roche-Posay Effaclair Duo right it's not the regular one though it's the new one that has a tint in it so it's the Unifiant um corrective moisturizer but it's like a makeup as well like more like a tinted moisturizer. I now wear this every single morning, even on days that I'm not wearing any makeup. It makes my skin look a lot healthier, and I use the lightest one, which matches my skin, even though I'm like a vampire. Um, I love this brand, but I just love that this helps your skin along, as well as kind of giving the bit of coverage. I'm gonna do a cheeky giveaway of a few of these, because I'm an ambassador with this brand, so I always have like, loads of their stuff stocked up in there if you know what I'm saying. Leave a comment with why you would like to win one of these in your skin tone and I'm going to pick three winners and I will announce them on Snapchat in two weeks time. Also this guys and this may be brand new or not out yet I just got it as a pure sample with a few other things and this stood out to me instantly it's the Studio Fix Perfecting Stick by MAC and this is in NW20 but it's kind of like a concealer like a ball concealer um, but it's not like really thick it's a little bit brightening what I find is that during the day I can just kind of top up under my eyes and around my mouth and redness around my nose and then blend it out with a finger and it just kind of makes my skin more uniform and lovely looking. I feel like I'll be using this out shtick quite a lot from now on so I just wanted to stick that in there. Just dropping everything. I don't think I even have to explain by now. I think we all know by now that I like to talk about sex and sex education and the sexy sexy times. I just always wished I had something like this when I was in school like YouTubers talking about things that we all talk about with our friends. I have a firm favourite new sex toy vibrator and the last time that I featured ones that I was enjoying was I think back in December's favorites video. This one is possibly the cutest one I have ever gotten and it's really quiet as well. Um, it has different settings. If you gotta bust one out or if you want to go mad and have a two-hour session with candles and got some incense going on in the background there, got a little bit of porn. Yeah I'll stop now but basically I'm never gonna look at rabbits in the same way again am I? It's a, it's a bunny rabbit. It's a pink, adorable bunny rabbit that I have no shame in showing anyone. Internet, meet Clinton. <laughs> this is incredible. I got it in Ann Summers and it is like a mini version of the rabbit. So the rabbit is like the classic dildo thing with these, but I, I'm not really into dildos. I'm just gonna say it's fine if you are. It's perfectly healthy if you are. Um, I wanna encourage all of the usage of the, the things to give the pleasures, but this, yeah, this doesn't have the dildo part. It's just the tip. And then it has this bit as well vibrates and these bits vibrate. And it's, it's, it's just, I love you. Foodie stuff. Okay, so I'm trying to eat less chocolate bars. I've been eating too many chocolate bars, as many of us do at times when we are very hormonal, which I have been recently, like, <laughs> so bad. This new contraception I'm on sucks. Um, anyway, this is something that's been helping me to eat less chocolate bars. It's the Super Seeds Peanut Original Lift 9 Bar. So they're just called 9 Bars. And this one is the peanut one, it tastes like a Snickers, literally. Um, but the ingredients are sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, dehulled hemp, then roasted peanuts, rice syrup, and then sugar, and then a bit of oils and salt. But it's great, I love it. They're good for brekkie, they're good for snacks. Um, just, just get one and taste one and then come back and complain if you hate it, because some of you will. If you watch my Food Diary Fridays, you'll probably know my recent favorite tea brand has been Pukka. Um, this is their Supreme Matcha Green Tea. I like drinking it because I find it calming, but the taste of green tea isn't my fave. This is an organic whole leaf green tea with matcha in it, and matcha is just so good at waking you up. Green tea is so good for you because it's full of antioxidants, which are great for the body. Um, but something like a lot of people think that green tea boosts your metabolism. The word metabolism is so misunderstood. So a body's main function is survival, right? A lot of people think the word metabolism refers to the burning of calories because like it often crops up in dialogue around weight loss and things, but it's actually a term to describe all the chemical functions involved in keeping you alive and keeping your organs functioning properly. It involves like the breakdown of food molecules to obtain energy and the synthesis 
look at me using big words, the synthesis of new compounds that are needed by your cells. So yeah, there's no like magic pill like green tea that will just give you a golden furnace of a metabolism. The media always reports that certain food and drink items like chili and green tea and stuff boosts your metabolism. The only way you can boost your metabolism is actually by adding muscle onto your body. The reason the media says this is because along with caffeine, these little bad boys contain antioxidants called catechins, which are believed to help with weight loss and weight management. But if you look at the clinical trials and stuff, you'll see a huge variation in data. So yeah, I don't drink this just for that kind of reason or anything like that. I just want those antioxidants all in my body and you know, all my Asian friends tell me it's good so just drink it anyway. So Netflix, please sponsor me. You now have a whole category in my monthly favorites video. First show on Netflix that you have to watch but I'm sure you've probably already seen it because every human being on the world is talking about this right now and that is Stranger Things. Oh my god. I've had a huge love affair for all things 80s for a long, long time. I kind of qualify as an 80s baby. I was born in 89. So like in the early 90s, a lot of the stuff that I was exposed to as a small child was from the 80s. Watching Stranger Things brought back so much nostalgia for me for movies like The Goonies, which I watched again like last week. Oh, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but it's a show about these group of kids and one of the children goes missing through mysterious circumstances and it's all like horror and thriller and Winona Ryder's in it and she's amazing. The children are so cute. The music is so good. The atmosphere and plot are perfect. It had a slow start for me, but I got really into it around like episode four, I think. The endings of the episodes were such like cliffhangers. It just, re I was screaming at my TV guys. Like it kept looping me back in and making me be like, Girl, what happens next? Second Netflix show is called Lovesick and it used to be called Scrotal Recall. You may have seen it under that name, but I feel like that would have put a lot of people off. So Lovesick, it is a kind of romantic comedy show, very short. You could binge watch it in like an afternoon. And the ending, the ending made me ball. It brought up loads of feels while being very funny at the same time. If you're looking for a show that kind of examines love and um, relationships and friendships and all that kind of stuff, definitely check out Lovesick. And finally, I have got to include Harry Potter and the Cursed Child parts one and two in script form. No, there'll be no spoilers. I am keeping the secrets. I have not yet seen the stage show, but I did want to read this in case anyone ruined it for me. That was my biggest fear was like logging into Twitter and someone just spoiling it for me because Harry Potter means the world to me. You guys probably know. You've probably seen my studio tour vlog. You've probably seen me running around Hogwarts in Universal Studios when they closed it down for all the YouTubers. Like I went to the midnight queues as a child. I rewatched the movies a hundred times as a child. This made me so happy. I sat in a cafe bawling reading this. Overall, I'm happy with it. Um, there was a couple of things where I was like, mm, we'll we can talk about it some other time on Snapchat. But in general, this just brought back a lot of aching, deep-rooted love that I have um, for this world, for everything that J.K. Rowling created. And I filled in a lot of this and the rest of the characters lives in my head. You know how when you read something, your brain almost like just fills in the scene and the image, but I was like fleshing out entire people's backgrounds and things that weren't even described in this because it is very like, you know, it's not like a normal book. Um, You can get through it very quickly. It's written like a script. That was one thing. It was a bit difficult for me to adapt to reading it a script rather than a book because I missed the very descriptive passages and stuff of J.K. Rowling's. However, yeah, I have to have to recommend this and just, I wanted to tell you how much I loved it because a lot of you have been asking me about it because you know I'm a big Harry Potter nude. I adored it and I'm really, really excited to see it eventually, probably in 2035. Please leave a comment with all of your favorites, guys, and thanks so much for watching. I love doing these favorites videos. They're like my favorite videos to film because it's literally just a chat, like a chat about old stuff that I like and then you guys leave comments and then we're all sharing amazing stuff. Why do I gesture so much? And I'm gonna go. I'll see you again soon. Bye.